two, one. Hello, and welcome to Tell the Damn Story with veteran award-winning authors, Alex Simmons, that's that guy, and Chris Ryan, that's me. Uh, on Tell the Damn Story, we celebrate the trials and tribulations, the challenges and joys of creativity, and hopefully help you tell your own damn story. That's right, and, that's right, that's right. That's what we be doing. That's right. And today, Alex, we are, we've got a good one. We're going to, we got a how to. That's very right. Very practically advice. Um, we have, I just I want to clear my, there you go. We have <laughs> advice for what to do when your short story is yes. finished. When you've been writing short stories and you're ready to. Ready to out. send them. Where do you send them? Yeah. Well, where we're going to go? tell you. Yes. Now, now right. beyond sending it to your mama and your friends and things like that, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting with that. There's a school of thought that that's exactly what you shouldn't do. <laughs> right. Because because they love you and they're on. Your yeah, they, side. They, they love you yeah. or or worst case scenario, they don't want to hurt your feelings. Right. They don't well, want actually, the tension at even, the Thanksgiving or whatever. Yeah. But you're also right, too. There's a there's a worse worst case scenario where they don't get you. They never right. have. And so right. here's a good time for them to go get a real job. So, right. again, you know, what are you going to do? So anyway, you and I, I, I would say that, you know, I don't send to uh, any family with the exception of my wife um, and she's the first one to read and it's because i you know what it's it's a little cheat i'm going to lend you a little cheat ladies and gentlemen if you find the one person who will say here's what i like about it mm -hmm. right um and oh there's a little typo here but here's what i really like about it sometimes you need that little uh, affirmation and yep. get you over that <laughs> yeah get get it so over that that's thing. a little cheap yeah a little cheap but you know um and uh if you can find a good editor that's a friend of yours oh, that, yeah. that can you know um go at you with bolt barrels you know yeah i had a couple of people kick my butt whew, over and over but it improved the work so we'll, all we'll right talk, we'll talk about that at the tail end too because there's a couple well, things i want to bring up there but anyway go ahead all right so um the first step when you are finished and you are sure it is finished, read it again. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> That's the first step. And yeah. we have a couple of things for you. Um, you know, these are the things that so many creative writing students blow off, you mm -hmm. know, and really we have to understand that it's a really crowded market. These things Super that we're going to tell you right now are the things that thin the market for you. These are the things that put you ahead of the pack. These are the things that separate the wheat from the published chap or the unpublished chap. <laughs> yeah, how many more of these do we have? <laughs> there you go. All okay. right. So the first step in, in sending out your work is to proofread and edit, right? And I call this how to be confident that you are ready to submit, right? You finish it. You think it's pretty good. Now take these steps and you'll be absolutely sure it's ready to go first read it out loud mm -hmm. with purpose i got two times you're going to do this first read it out loud for clarity anything that you stumble over anything that doesn't work that's where you're going to uh make a final correction or this or that maybe a word this is where when you read it out loud, that's this is where you discover much to your surprise that you use the word that twice. And, and you know, uh, you didn't realize you wrote it twice. Right. <laughs> or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or or, or um, there's you some might grammar. Find a, you might find another word that would be even smoother, that yes. flows more freely uh, yeah. in context, you know, right. or you also will find in reading it out loud. Wow. I used asparagus three times this page <laughs> that's too many times using a particular word you know or zeal yeah. you know something some word that's a great word but you wound up using it more than once you got to kind of hit the cinnamon synonyms or something um so you're reading it out loud for clarity right and you got to do it charles dickens style right um charles dickens daughter wrote a memoir about growing up with him and saying that, you know, she used to think that he had guests over 
in up in his room, his writing room, and he thought he was having a meeting or or uh, preparing a play, and it was all just you know Chuck, you know, doing Charlie, all the different yeah, voices, you know, yeah, Charles right. Dickens, you know, and he would have everybody see him, and and I, you know, it's fun, but you're also doing it for clarity. Does that sound? And that's the second step. Read it out loud again for story. Mm-hmm. You're asking yourself. Can a reader experience this story? Right. One of the things you want to check for, can they experience the story through the five senses? Right. Sight, smell, hearing, taste, touch. While you're going through it, is there some sight that they can see, some smell they can smell? You know, is there a possibility that they can, you know, taste something, you know? Um, taste their own fear, taste their own blood, uh, you know. And, the, and again, sometimes taste. the reference that you're using to bring that out, you know, it's against certain tactile experiences, is, is a reference that someone else might have uh, some experience with. You right. know, so you can, as salty as, or such and such right. and such, you know. Right. So, you know, exactly. you can use that. I just wanted to, to, to mention right. that. And the, the reason we're mentioning the five senses is because the more of those you can get on per page, the more you're going to hook the reader in, you know? So it's first you're reading for clarity. Does this, the story make sense? Did you get all the errors out? Then you're reading for the reader experience, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's possible to use all five uh, senses, every page, you're giving yourself an edge. Um, The next step is, does the dialogue ring true? two parts to this would people talk like that (laughs) and does the dialogue ring true for that particular character right uh we've all had uh stories where one character speaks in a a, maybe a a slight dialect or, or even the word choice right um a more educated person might have a more specific word, while a, um, a person who grew up working was going to have a different vocabulary, not necessarily dumb, but it might be more hands-on, it might be more grounded. More you know? basic, yeah, basic yeah. dialogue, right. You know, um, we don't want to go to the stereotype. Uh, that's another thing to check. You know, does that character sound like just a stereotype? How might you be more specific? That's the best way to get rid of a stereotype. Be and I would also just quickly, creator. yeah, I'm sorry. I would also just quickly add in there that, um, especially for emerging writers, people who are, you know, still getting their feet wet, still, still sort of flexing their wings, that the material that you write about if it's totally unfamiliar to you, do your homework. And if you're not able or not willing to do that kind of intense homework to get your character's authenticity down, then write things that you know, things that you are familiar with. Start out there, get your your muscles and things worked up there in that arena that you're familiar with, and then branch out when you're more uh, willing, capable, able to do more research and discover and involve different characters yeah there's 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 two rules of thumb you know there's the write what you know Mm -hmm. and then there's the write what you want to know (laughs) but if you're doing the second one well go ahead and find it out (laughs) yeah do your homework yeah yeah. all right so after you've done all these steps on your finished story Right, because that's, well, that's really where we are. We're a finished story, and now we're really going through the polish and really getting it ready. The last step of this is to read it out loud. It's the final out loud reading, and this is where you really do the Charles Dickens deal. Does it sound finished? Is there anything that you're that you're still stumbling over, or anything that's bothering you? You know, you got to be really honest with yourself. The honest cuts two ways. There are the people who, oh, everything I I, I wrote, uh, therefore it's great, right? <laughs> and there's the other piece that I wrote, therefore it sucks, right? Yeah. Neither of those extremes are accurate, right? What or you want to look really? at yeah. is, is this ready for market? And is it something that readers can experience? 
everything sound true, rings true, then you're ready to go. Ready, ready to go. And you, the next step on this is to put it to the side. And we go to step two, how to find markets. Well, first thing you got to do is you got to know your genre, right? Mm -hmm. What market, what genre market are you writing in? You know, um, those publishers who are looking for a crime story have very little use for a horror story because that's what someone else does. You know, uh, a romance market has very little use for speculative sci-fi. Now, you might argue, well, wait a second. How about if I'm crossing genres? That's fine, but probably one of them dominate the story. You can have a sci-fi romance. Absolutely. Right? But if it's all heavy sci-fi, that's going to a sci-fi market. You yes, know, it's if a it, sci-fi story with a romantic element. Right. But if it's a romantic story and it's all about romance and there's very little sci-fi, you know, if it's about, you know, meeting the love of your life while you're working as a custodian on the moon base alpha, well, that's, you know, how, how you get a, you know, scientist to fall in love with you. Okay, then that's just the setting and you really don't go much sci-fi then it's a romance, that kind of thing. Now, um, Alex, in your Blackjack series, seen here and here and <laughs> over <good>. there <laughs> and over there. <laughs> and here and um, there and everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's for you video guys um, or ladies. Um, you are always very careful in your adventure. The, the Blackjacks are adventure stories, you know, set in history, but adventure stories. But you always keep out the supernatural element. There are some things that you have you have made conscious decisions about. Yep. Can you discuss about those conscious decisions and how they affect your marketing one way or the other? Well, you know, um, for that particular series, and again, for those of you who don't know what it's about, very quickly, it's about an African-American soldier of fortune in the 1930s. And because it has historical elements, it's not, it's not true history, but it's set in historical backdrops. Um, and because it has a black protagonist, um, my first concern when I created this series some years ago was that if I am constantly putting him in these extraordinary fan fantasy circumstances, uh, a certain body of the audience would not believe some of the true relevant material that was historical, that it would become, oh, this is total fiction, total fantasy, and black folks couldn't do this and never did right. that and that sort of thing. So I was very careful to say that there was a limit to how fantastic the world around him would go. Right. Now, the one thing I would say is, because you know, I didn't necessarily say there were vampires or things like that. I, I didn't want to go into that realm. By the same token, I did do a story, a short story uh, called Night of Fear. And mm -hmm. in it, he's hired to bodyguard a family, of a Scots family, a laird oh, yes. in Scotland, yes. right? right? Because the family, is, he's told, is being wiped out by werewolves. The curse, oh, werewolves, all, and when he goes there, I'm he's not sure forward. what he's going to encounter. And so it's a lot of the story deals with those kind of supernatural elements. And he's trying to figure out what do I believe? Right. Do I believe in, in, in evil in that form? Because something's killing people and I have to try and stop it. So, right. you know, I think there's a, there's a way to walk a line. And I don't want to give too much more of the story away, but I'll just say there's a way to walk a certain line and try and keep it closer to fiction slash reality than total fiction and fantasy. Right. Now, if people are now intrigued by that story and want to read it, they can go to Amazon.com. Ah, yes. And what's the name of that particular collection? Uh, that is, um, oh, Blackjack. Black, yeah, it's Blackjack uh, Buried Secrets. There you the go. Name so of the book. It's if you want to know in that book, Blackjack yes, you, Buried Secrets. You want to know how that turns out? Amazon.com, Blackjack Buried Secrets. That was and called once a you do that, club, you'll come okay. back for shooters <laughs> yes. and for <laughs> yeah, all the rest. Driven and all those other <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so um, you were, you were all saying. right. So the, the reason we bring this up is because again, knowing your market, knowing what your 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 story does helps you know where to look. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are two places we want to suggest, right? One that is uh, used by a lot of professionals and it's a, it's a great service, but it's a pay service. And that's duotrope service, D-U-O-T-R-O-P-E. And the, you can go in and say, I'm looking for sci-fi. And they'll show you where the open calls are, where they're looking for a contribution to an anthology, all these, you know, if we you We should mention novel, this is an information service. Well, it's a service. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, are the, right. they collect uh and they 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 market themselves as they only publish reputable publishers and that kind of stuff but they're doing their very best and if there's one that you know but their their track record is astounding for having good results so, uh, so would you call them sort of publishers curators yeah that's pretty good that's pretty good or or open call or or submission uh curators you okay know? um uh, and that would include like, you know, agent currently looking for, you know, if that happens and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So there's a service, but again, pay, right? And what's it called? Duotrope, D-U-O-T-R-O-P-E. Spell that duotrope.com and you'll find everything you need. We'll or try and Google put that it and read the, on it uh, and see if it's right for you. Right. We'll try and put that in the, in the link yeah. uh, wherever yeah. this is. You, you pick this uh, broadcast up. But anyway, right. now we have a lot of emerging authors. Right, mm -hmm. who uh, who watch the show or listen to the podcast, tell the diamond story, um, and they may not, you know, they may not be ready to make that plunge yet. You know, they just want to. I want to submit, and then I, so another thing you can do is go to Facebook and uh, search "open call." Those tend to be all caps, but give it a shot. Open call, and then your genre. So open call horror. Open call mystery, open call crime, open call sci-fi, open call romance, whatever. And there are pages that publish open submissions or call for submissions and that kind of stuff. So you can scroll through and find so many. And if you like and follow, then you know they'll show up in your feed and all that sort of stuff. So it's another way. And for if you're starting just starting out um, or in your first year or so or get trying to get yourself established you may not be ready for do a trope yet or you may be I just want to get used to doing this boom so there are your sources now, so now we've given you two places you can go to find many places that are looking for your work mm -hmm. but we're not done yet right 10 Part more three. minutes and, and we, we got at least... I'm not sure if I have a full 10 things. minutes. I might have four or five minutes. Here we oh, go. Oh, good. Okay, then we can, um, we can sing the last five. La, 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 la. <laughs> All right. So um, what you want to do is read the works that the place you're interested in puts out. You know, um, many of these uh, have websites that have samples or they'll publish uh, flash fiction uh, on the website and create anthologies in addition reading a bunch of the uh, stuff that they have published already will give you a, a very very clear idea of the tone of what they what they are looking for you want your story to be something they're looking for right um for example um it might your story might be too gory for publisher number one or magazine number one, but there may be two other sources that are looking for the gore, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's what you, if, you know, uh, you'll see that they put in, here's what we're looking for, here's that we're not looking for, you right. know? And, and again, if you have a chance to scan some of the material they've already put out, it'll give you even more insight right. into what right. they well, like. You know, we, you have to, one of the great tricks of being a writer is learning to be really honest with yourself. Because a lot of writers that are emerging will be like, well, it's not too gory. You cut off seven people's heads. <laughs> We, we had a situation with someone who, who didn't understand the difference between their perception of gore and the requirements that we had for the kind of material we were doing and the audience that we had. 
And it was it was that person was belligerent about it or con- insistent right. about it. And and really, it was a matter of I'm not saying you can't do what you do, but you got to find the right place to do it find in the market. And yes, this isn't that place. And you know again, that? sometimes it's a gradation. You know, yeah. um, I was make I, I don't write sex scenes. You know, uh, so I was all right. You're uncomfortable with that as an exercise try one and i did what would be a detective romance or so i thought right but it opened with one particular character a woman he was trying to get some information out of brought him into the house brought him into the room and it opens uh they are quite horizontal (laughs) and active he doesn't, and, not only does he not write them, he doesn't talk about them. He no, doesn't. I don't. And and because I kind of spoke ab- about their passion building, but I wasn't clinical, I thought yep. that would be okay. And when I first shared it with some people who know that market, they were like, I'm not sure how I can say this. You might be shocked when I'll, I'll clean it up. They were yeah, very, okay. very graphic. But they said, you know, the interlocking parts were interlocking. <laughs> That's a violation of this particular genre. Shocking to me, but it led to more research. And, you know, if you're going to do romance, there's four or five or six different styles, subgenres of romance. Mm-hmm. None of them, you know, there's very few of them that want graphic sets. Yes, so Barbara Cartland I've, didn't, there, there was a lot of passion and, and stargazing and, right. And he did this and all that, but not a lot of interlocking. And uh, it's a lovely place in Scotland. Yeah, she <laughs> says, uh, the person who told me that said, if you go to the bottom of the page, that paragraph when he's running out of the uh, house, uh, uh, pulling his pants up, start the story there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you have to know what they're looking for. And in that, you'll see submission guidelines, read them read examples of the work and then once you've decided this is a a good fit the next thing you have to do is read and follow the submission guidelines carefully you know you know the old saying give people what they want right give publishers exactly what they want it, you know, if they say uh, no attachments, there's no attachment. They say attach it and put this. They want the name here. They want you to follow a certain layout. You just Google the layout That's and, right. and follow it. If you don't, it just gives them an excuse to toss yours and move on. Right. Your right? job is your job is to get accepted, not to change their their world at this point in space and time. When you're Stephen King a few years from now, <laughs> then you know you can add material back into your manuscript and all that good stuff. But right now your focus is to get accepted, to get right. purchased or to get published. So you do all that, you follow the guidelines, you send it out, two last things. One, don't bug them. That's, even if they like your stuff, if you send them an email every week or every day or whatever, that'll get them to say, all right, it's, it's still not worth it to work with this person. Don't bug them. Instead, final step, go write something else. Always <laughs> be writing. Or ABC, always be creating. Always yes. be creating. ABC, <laughs> easy. Okay. okay. So, so that's just... how to find markets, ladies and gentlemen. Right. And and we did it in 26 minutes. Uh, but and now, gonna... as promised, Alex will sing. Yeah, yes. No, anyway, um, just two things I want to just jump back to. Uh, ring true. Um, if you have read through this manuscript a couple of times and you think you've got it, but you're not sure, you're still you're still nervous. If you can find a person who, as we said before, you feel is trustworthy and will tell you the truth, let them read it just to give you that extra little. Mm, yeah, it's working. Or maybe they'll spot something that you might have missed. Or the thing that might have been bothering you that you weren't sure about, you couldn't quite spot. Maybe they'll help you spot it. Uh, also, but don't tell them. Don't tell them beforehand. Right. No. No. Right. Just, Let just them tell read them. It. I'd like you Let to read, read it. it uh, right. There. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, Chris mentioned flash fiction, which also uh, made me think of also micro fiction. Not everything you write needs to be a novel. You don't have yeah, to have everything true. has to be eighty thousand words. Right. You can write good stories in five hundred words or twenty five hundred right. words. 
Mm-hmm. So another exercise for you, especially if you're trying to break into a particular market, yeah. is to write shorter fiction. Yeah. Uh, just to get yourself, you know, your muscles t- uh, sort of trained to it, to get your eye and ear trained to it, to give you more material to possibly put out there uh, right. as an offering and trying to get published. So I just wanted well, to, to touch yeah. those things. And you may find that you really love it. I love the 700 word crime story. And Shotgun Honey taught me about that. And that's but, another another site. Uh, yeah, that shotgunhoney.com. You, However, I, I, I wrote one this last couple of days very excited to polish it and get it all that. And then I went to submit it to Shotgun Honey and the window is closed for right now. So know your market, know if they're actively looking. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Go to the website. Yes. Easy to do. Like Easy you said before, do. follow the guidelines. Follow. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, so I hope this was, helps everybody. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And and again, this is our our, our new format for for the uh, coming season, season five of Tell the Damn Story. So we're going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit more concise. I know. I know. You miss all the banter, but that's okay. We'll throw some more of that in next time. Uh, anything? Any parting words, Chris? Because we've got like light light side order of banter. That's all we're allowing. Right yeah. Now. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay so anyway all oh. right just you know go out and do it just go ahead and send it don't worry about it collect those rejections right learn I don't from know whether, yeah. was it was it um steve i think it was stephen king i put a nail on the wall and he would just stick all the rejections on until the nail fell out and he just got a bigger nail and put <laughs> just they were just you that much clo- each wall. rejection <laughs> that much closer to the one that was uh yes exactly. so yeah there you that, go because that's the other thing you have to do when you're submitting material to agents, publishers, or whatever, is, is start to build a little bit of a thicker skin, you know, a little discerning, you know, because sometimes some of the critiques that'll come back are useful to you. But right. also, if just being said, just hearing no is not always the most comforting thing, but you've got to build up a little bit of tolerance to that sort of thing because you're going to well, hear it from time to time. Which is why you write something new and send that out and write right. something new and send that out. So even if you get a rejection, well, I got two others I'm looking at. Right. And then you look at that one that got rejected and you say, all right, is it still, do I still like the way it is? And send it out again. That's Just right. keep sending it to what, different what was places. It? Um, Harry until Potter, you find the place. 13, mm-hmm. 13 rejections, 13 yeah, well. different publishers rejected the material. Now she can yeah. buy England. So, you know, yeah, once they, again, you never know. Anyway continue folks to so, tell and as far as thicker skin, you can only do it through experience shellac yes. does not work <laughs> or a good <laughs> shellacking now that'll build up well you know we've skin. all got that once in a while <laughs> <laughs> anyway everybody like i said uh continue to work on and tell your damn story chris and i will be back next time with another bit of of next time's an interview yes that useful information but who are we going to be interviewing uh, we're going to be inter- in, um, interviewing, interviewing, I like that, I like that. interviewing a cover artist extraordinaire, Julie Bell. Bell. I, for Bell. some reason, I am hooked on calling her Julie Strong, but it's Julie Bell. Julie well, Bell. you know what? In the interview, you'll find out why you keep thinking of her as Julie Strong. Yes. Okay. All right, so, ladies and gentlemen. Julie Bell, the fantasy artist of, of great renown, will be our guest next week on Tell the Damn Damn Story. Take care, everybody. Peace.